I'm going to do something today that's never been done on YouTube before, at least not in the car world. And if you're asking what that something is, well, it's finishing a project. While this car looks phenomenal and it's running and driving, there's still a lot wrong with it. I bought this 997 Turbo a year ago for $34,000, and sure, it's running and driving now, and it's running and driving pretty well, but it's not finished. I don't want to be like a lot of these other YouTubers that get a car 90% done and then move on to the next one. I want this thing to be 100% complete, and we're nearly there. There's just a lot of little issues to fix. And these are the issues that take a lot of time, but I want to do it. I want to fix everything. I don't want this car to be nearly perfect. It's such a good car. It deserves the best. And I can't wait to wrap this thing up. And I think we're going to start on the beautiful terracotta interior. Well, in this box is some really cool, really expensive parts that are going to really transform the interior of this car. And this isn't even all of them. Up first, a new shift knob that you guys have been pointing out for multiple videos that I've been driving around without a shift knob. Obviously, I know that, but I was waiting to get some other interior parts and throw it all together at the same time. I am super excited to actually drive this thing with a knob, that's for sure. Now, for the rest of the stuff. And to go along with that stuff, only the best of the best parts from Renline to include new pedals and some carbon fiber. So that's a lot of interior upgrades to go in this car. I gotta pull the center console then install the new e-brake with all those associated goodies and then well, we'll just go from there. Perfect fitment, just as expected. Since this was a track car, someone welded in an extension to the seat belt, and I assume that's because it had bucket seats in it, but I need to get rid of that because there are obviously no longer bucket seats in this car. That's how you break a wrist. Now, while I'm making the car healthier, I actually am trying to make myself healthier as well. With today's sponsor, AG1, I'm well on my way to being a healthier person. I don't know about you guys, but my diet is nowhere near perfect. AG1 supports my immune system. It's got 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. It's a comprehensive nutrition supplement that provides nutrients for body, brain, and gut health. But it tastes good. I'm not gonna lie about it. I drink AG1 as a new morning ritual. And like I said, it tastes great. Now any of you guys that take supplements knows it can get overwhelming. It's nice to know one scoop every morning, my multivitamins and probiotics and more. AG1 is good for gut health. It's good for energy and focus, plus stress and mood balance. Something we probably all suffer from it, at least a little bit. So to get started with AG1, you can go to drinkag1.com forward slash Matt Ross, or you can scan the QR code on screen. That'll get you a free bottle of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five AG1 travel packs with your first subscription. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video. What are you doing there, bud? Well, I'm removing the toe strap. Oh, I thought you weren't gonna do that unless you got 5,000 likes on the last video. Oh yeah, that's right. It wasn't even close. It's going right back on. Maybe you'll get it this time. The 
armrest wasn't the only carbon fiber piece going in this car. I also have these side pieces that go next to the radio, and these are all from Renline. Again, mentioning that this was a track car, you can see that these pedals are a little worn down and that's to be expected when you're driving a car hard on track. So I got some brand new covers from Renline. They're the same ones that are on there, but it's gonna make these look brand new. One of the things I'm most looking forward to is the shifter because I haven't had a shift knob on here, so you really can't get a feel for the numeric shifter and just how good it is. I mean, it is really good, but it would be better with an actual shift knob, so I'm not just grabbing a metal rod, essentially. Oh my God, it's so much better with a knob. Additionally, this e-brake handle is fire. Oh yeah, buddy. I just have to figure out how to attach the uh, the shift boot. That that I'm kind of confused about. My anxiety level with this is through the roof. Yes, that should work really nicely. Wish me luck, boys. I also have to get it straight. <laughs> if it wasn't clear, the socket was placed on there with a zip tie temporarily to center that plastic piece in there once it was hot glued. Because you can't have this thing on there the wrong way or the whole thing will be crooked in the center console. Hey, socket came out, shift boot stayed in. After lots of fighting and swearing off camera, don't you wanna go in your home? You stupid mother piece of shit. Why don't you get in your home? I believe I got it. Oh, yes sir. Oh, it feels so good with a knob. My knob feels great. Yeah, yeah, I said it. Anyway, let's put the rest of this together. Get rid of these stupid gloves. And with these parts and pieces, this is the most complete this car has ever been on the interior, and it looks fantastic. I'm so happy with it. Look at all these old parts that I removed, but there are some still things missing inside, i.e. the steering column cover. Now it's missing for a reason, and you guys may remember that this car threw a bunch of codes at me when I rebuilt it to the PASM, the PSM, ABS, all those kind of lights. I finally got a Durametric scan tool. I diagnosed it as there was a clock spring issue because I was getting no steering level input into the system. All right, fault codes. Steering angle sensor control module, no communication. So I replaced the clock spring and that made absolutely no difference. This is giving no angle input whatsoever. And as it turns out, I actually figured out what the problem is, and it was super, super simple. When I was trying to figure out why my license plate bulbs weren't working, I looked at the fuse panel and noticed there was a fuse missing, and it wasn't for the license plate bulbs. That's quite odd that I'm missing a fuse. I wonder what fuse it is. Capture Abra cameras. Now, if I had to guess, combination steering column module probably has something to do with all of my issues and the fact that that fuse isn't in there. So I replaced the fuse, did the new calibration, and everything is good to go now. So now we are down to a flat tire and an airbag fault. And now I have control of the PASM. I can turn the sport mode and stuff off. Like, that's so cool. I'm so glad I can do that now. Easy fix. Never needed that new clock spring, but I probably did need to program it with the software that I had. But either way, I'm just, I'm just so glad that's done. 
I just got to fix the airbag light. Now that that saga is over, I can finally put the steering column covers back on for good. Much better. This interior is nearly complete now. I got to get a cover for that. Well, I actually have it. See, this side has it. This side doesn't. I don't know if I misplaced it, lost it, or if it's somewhere in storage. I can't find it. But either way, I only had the one side. So I had to get one off of eBay. Not a big deal. Let's throw that in there as well. Much better. And yeah, I gotta clean this whole interior. Don't don't worry about that. We'll just we'll do one of those and it's fine. Now I'm not looking forward to this part. Fixing the AC. I've taken this car to get the AC charged twice. The first time the car broke down and I had to have it towed back. The last time I made it to the shop, they put a vacuum on it, the vacuum didn't hold. So there was a massive leak somewhere. We did a little more diagnostics and found out where the leak was coming from. And it's a line that's a real pain in the rear to get wow, to. You gotta be kidding me. The screwdriver is buried into the abyss. I do not see it anywhere. Where could it have even gone? Well, anyway, on to the next problem. So we believe this is the corporate and it's on the side and there's basically yet I don't see any other way to get it out other than what I just did there. I mean, you can even see it. I mean, it looks like that's where it was leaking from, but let me do a, a blow test here. Not that kind of blow test. Ru yeah, not, not, that, not that kind of blow test, yeah. By the way, for all those easily offended, this is clearly sugar. Oh yeah, I hear it. I hear it seeping out. Time to order a new one. So I was trying to figure out what this was. I've never seen anything like it. It's not the dryer, because the dryer is up front. And I look it up, and here this is a fuel cooler. Only Porsche would design something like that, a, a fuel cooler. That's insane, because these lines just didn't make any sense. And then I turned the key on to diagnose some other stuff, and I heard liquid coming out. I was like, what's that? And I come back here, and this, of course, spit fuel out. Can you guys name any other cars out there that have a fuel cooler? Because I can't. While that was entirely way more work than I expected to remove an AC line, it is out, so we can press forward. I just gotta wait for the new one to come in. Now, on to the next problem. All right, so I got these headlights in and they look great, but I definitely need to aim them up. They're, they're pointed nearly straight down. I certainly don't want them pointed straight down, but luckily that's an easy fix. Oh yeah, that's way better. Something else the car is doing, it's got a clunk very light clunk in the front end. So if I'm going forward and tap the brakes, you can hear it. And if I'm backing up and you tap the brakes, I can hear it. I need to nut and bolt check this thing anyway. And I have all the factory skid plates and stuff to put underneath. actually hear the noise there. 
I'm just not sure what it's coming from. Question. I've never seen a top hat look like this, so I don't think it's right. Can you guys let me know? So I've never seen a top hat where it can literally just completely spin off. Like anytime I've had it, that's that's been attached and part of the unit itself. I don't think I should be able to do that. And that may be my noise, but it's like that on the other side too. So I'm not completely sure. Your thoughts, please? I'm also gonna try to take some camber out of this because it's not a race car currently. It didn't need that much camber. I mean, there were some bolts I found loose, but nothing crazy. It all needs to be gone over anyway, so this is good practice. Something else I wish I could do, I want softer springs, but according to Bilstein, they only make one set of springs for these coilovers. So I don't know if these are aftermarket or not. I mean, they're definitely Bilstein's and they have a part number there, but anyway, I wanna raise the car a little bit because it's just a hair too low. And we'll see if these things are seized on here or not. I don't have the, the tool for it. That's bending too small and they're my biggest ones. Oh, I got it. Wasn't so bad. One rotation, three rotation. We're gonna go with that. Looks like probably about half an inch or so. Looks more like six inches to me. In every tool, there is a hammer. But now you know I can't put these back on as dirty as they were, especially since they've been sitting outside for a year. I'm definitely not sure how these attach or what order and they attach, or even if these are the right parts for this car. It came with a car, I never took them off, but I'm gonna figure it out one way or another. But since I'm down here, I wanted to check the transmission fluid level because I never checked it after doing the clutch. Yeah, I just needed the tiniest little bit. That makes me feel better. Now I can start fitting some of these under trays though. I don't know what's what, what goes where. These have never been on there while I've owned the car. Without too much of a struggle, these parts started to fall into place and I figured out where they went, how they went, and how they bolted up. And it's looking really nice. The one bad thing about quick jacks is that there's no like side access underneath here on the outside or the inside of the car. So I can't get the last two panels on with these quick jacks in the way. So I've got to essentially lower the car and then jack it up the old fashioned way. incredible amount of work but it is pretty satisfying to see the underside of this with all the factory plastics and aero really cleans it up 
there are a couple cracks and maybe I'll eventually replace these, but for now, I'm happy with it. I just gotta order a whole bunch of those little plastic nuts because I only have about three of them and I need like 20. <laughs> What was supposed to take just a few minutes actually took me multiple hours to get these under trays installed. That's just how these things go sometimes. After the under trays, I wanted to move on to the final dash light, the airbag light. Now I thought it was maybe some wiring that I mixed up when I messed up a connector, but I flip-flopped the wiring and that made no change. So I'm honestly not sure what this is. I think I need you guys' help here. Well, that was a giant waste of time. I think this is the one thing on this car that I'm not gonna be able to have fixed in this video. Well, unfortunately couldn't get the airbag light fixed, but every other light is fixed except for the tire pressure monitors but that'll be fixed when I get the new wheels and tires installed. But this car is pretty much complete. If you guys could just let me know about that airbag light, 8035 passenger airbag stage one, lower limit, something weird. I don't know what it is. The only thing stopping me from finishing this car is installing one AC line. That was fun. Let's make sure the car still starts. All seems right and tight there. No leaks at the fuel cooler. As dumb as that is. I gotta get the AC charged. It's finishing a project. Finishing a project. Well, it's almost finished. 